to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and it's spring semester 2013. In this session I'm going to introduce you to script tools and script tools are basically in your personal toolbox. You would just double click on a tool and it would run with dialogues where the user basically can select from these dialogues. And the nice thing with script tools is it allows for filtering to prevent errors. So for example, if your Python script requires a point feature class, you could specify in that dialog to only show the user point feature classes. And then the output from your script tool can go to your ArcMap data frame or table of contents. And the other thing that's nice is it's portable. So all you have to do is email somebody your TBX file, which is your toolbox, and then all the script tools are inside that toolbox container. And then script tools could be put in toolbars or context menus also. So script tools actually come with ArcGIS. So for example, if we look at some of the tools in ArcGIS, here's a tool, Multiple Buffering. And you notice by this icon, it's really a script tool. So if we right mouse click on it and go to Properties, it's a script tool and the Python script is stored in this location. And then it just has these dialog parameters. So in this case, the parameters are there's input feature, which is a feature layer, output feature class, um, distances, buffer units, etc. And that's what we're going to do in this session is make a basic script tool. Okay, the first step would be to write a Python script that you're going to use with your script tool. And typically what you do is the first few lines of your Python script will correspond to the script tool dialogues. So for example, here we have input points feature class will be a variable and we'll get that variable from our script tool. So anytime you want to get something from a script tool dialog, it's arcpy.getParameter as text. And then it's index. So the first time we use this, it'll be index zero. The next time we'll use it, it'll be index one. And then the last time we'll use it will be index two. So basically what we're going to do is we'll get these strings and this string from our dialog will become our input feature class. And when we build our script tool dialog, we specify what the type is. Is it a feature layer? Is it a feature class? Is it a table, etc.? So basically what we're going to do is we'll get input feature class and then we'll do table. So this will be our input table and then we'll have something for an output feature class. And then if you want to report to the user through a script tool, you would use the arcpy.add message and then any string inside parentheses. So basically we're gonna run our script tool and it won't really do anything, it'll just put these messages out. So the first message will be input feature class and the name of this variable, what's inside that variable, which will be our input feature class. All the way down to our third message will be an output feature class. And then whatever we specify our output feature class to be. So this is just a simple Python script as an example. So I'll just save this. And then to create a script tool, what you need to do is make your own personal toolbox. So if you go to any folder that you have write access to, so for example, this folder, I'll make a new toolbox. And then you can name that toolbox anything you want, and I'll just call this test script tools. So this is actually a container, and you can have many script tools inside this container. So right now there's none inside the container. So if we right mouse click on our .tbx, our toolbox, then we could say, well, let's add a script to this toolbox. So then we'll go through and add a script. So we can name this script anything we want as long as there's no special characters. 
So I'll call this script um, test script. So no spaces, no underlines. And then the label can have some spaces because that's just the label for it. So I'll say this is a script to report dialogue contents selected by user. And then the description would be sort of the abstract of your script tool. So this script tool, tool does whatever. So this will basically be the title of your script tool and this basically will be the description of the abstract of your script tool. And then I always say store relative path names. And that way, if, for example, somebody gets this by email and they put this toolbox in E drive, it'll still work. Uh, right now, it's going to be in the C drive. Okay, and then next. And then we have to specify what script, what Python script is tied to this script tool. So then we would browse to our Python script, and I just called it test.py. And then next, and you remember in test.py, we have arcpy get parameters text three times. So now we have to put in three parameters that will correspond to these three arcpy get parameter as text. So the first parameter would be what you want the user to see. So I'll put input feature class. And then we specify what the data type is. So here we'll specify the data type as being feature layer. And then the next thing would be our second parameter, input table. And that will be, we could specify that's going to be a table. So you could say it's going to be a DBase table or you could specify it's going to be a table, or you could specify, if you're real old-fashioned like I am, probably something about info. It could be an info table. So here we'll say it's going to be a table type. So it could be DBase, could be GeoDatabase, or it could be info table. And then the last thing was our output feature class, and that's going to be a feature class. And then down here, we have the direction. So by default, it's input. We want to change that to output for our output feature class. OK, for all the input feature class, we could always filter it. So if I go back to that parameter, down here, there's a filter. So if you click on filter, we could say we're going to filter that feature class. And we could say we only want points, polylines, and polygons to be allowed for the user to access. Or you could say, I only want points, and then only points will be accessible by the user for that parameter. So let's do that. We'll only want points. OK, and then we're finished. So now we've got our script, and you'll notice it has this long title. So this long title was because when we started, we gave it a label script to report dialogue content selected by user. So whatever you put in as label is going to be the title of your script. And then if we double click on our script, it will be the header of this box, basically. It'll be the title of that box. OK, so we have input feature class. So we could browse to climate stations, and it should show us all the feature classes that are point feature classes in this folder. And it does show us only points in this folder. So we'll pick Talkeetna. And then we could say input table, so we could browse to some location that has tables. Here's a table. And then output feature class. So let's go to some geo database. So let's see here. Here's a geo database. And then in that geo database, I'll call it test output. So now we've got all the three parameters specified. So then if we hit OK, what's going to happen is our script tool is just going to put these messages out. So what was the input feature class? What was the input table? What was the output feature class? So then I just say OK. And the input feature class is a string. And this is the string for the input feature class. And the input table is this string. And that's the string for that input table. And then the output feature class is this string. So that's basically how script tools work. If you remember 
when I created these, this script tool, this parameter is a feature layer, and this parameter is a feature class. There's a difference between feature layer and feature class. So let me make my second one a feature class that's an input feature class. So feature class, and let's just call this um, input feature class. And we'll also make that filtered points only. Let's make this one feature layer. Make this feature class. And then this will filter for points only. So our first one's a feature layer, our second one's a feature class. Okay, so if we go to our table of contents, and we'll add some points, layers to our table of contents. So now our table of contents has three point layers. So then if we run this tool, feature layer allows you to have a drop down which lists all the point layers in our table of contents. Or it allows us to browse to some folder and then it lists all the feature classes in that container. So that's feature layer. Feature class doesn't allow you a drop down to access the layers in your data frame. So with feature class you're forced to browse to some container and choose off the hard drive some feature class. So that's the difference between the two. So feature layer we've got this drop down that gives us access to the layers in our active data frame and feature class does not. So for your assignment what I want you to do is make a script tool and the script tool would be something like this. So you have the user select a workspace that contains some feature class and then the script tool counts for every feature class in that workspace how many features are there. So for example, if we browse to some folder like climate stations and then just add that workspace and then OK, it reports for this feature class there's one point, for this feature class there's one point, and all the way through. So for this feature class there's six points. So that's your assignment for next time is to come up with a script tool that the user selects a workspace and then your script basically gets all the feature classes in that workspace and then gets the feature count for every feature class in that workspace and then reports that to the user. And I'll go over the solution to that script in the start of our next video session.